Good morning, friends. Hello and welcome to everyone listening to us this morning here from the Light Art and Kingdom of Art community. So grateful for everyone that um, is able to come today. We're so excited to listen from the Dutch art community. And with me will be co-hosting um, Milton, hard art, as you see here. We're so grateful for his time. Thank you so much for being here. Milton, welcome. How are you this morning? GM, GM, welcome. Thanks for having me again. I'm excited to be here. I'm doing great. Excited to get this conversation started. Thank you so much for joining us. And with us, we have, and I'm going to butcher your name or the way you say this, but Petite is with us, Petite and Dilly. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. Hello, and thank you for hosting us. You can just say Angie. I mean, this is just a, a handle I was looking for when I uh, updated my Twitter account a while ago, but uh, Angie, I think, will do perfectly and will be easier for everyone else. Very cool. Thank you so much, Angie. We so appreciate you coming up and representing the Dutch art community. I understand you want to bring some people up. And so just let Milton or I know. Um, Milton, you're welcome to, to help me bring up some people, some of the artists in the community that we will be highlighting today, um, mm -hmm. which is very cool as today um, a community interviews a community. I find this so interesting, very similar to what Hard Art is doing with his angel um tra with Trevor Jones community um anyways and so I think it's very cool how we're starting to bridge the gaps um uh, community with community and so I'm very honored and very excited to get this conversation started so Angela if you have any when you want to start bringing up um please let us know and we can start doing that sure thank you so much for uh, hosting us and we're all very 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 excited as you can imagine We are too. Okay. And so as we get started, we do want to let you know that if you have a comment for the artist or um, the community, you are welcome to put it on the chat box at the bottom. Um, that chat lives on. Um, some of the art that we'll share at the top, I'll try to put it at the um, chat box at the bottom so that that lives on and, and people can see it after um, and while they're listening to the recording. So uh, with that, as we get started, um, Angela, do you have anyone you want to bring up currently? Um, let me see who is already listening in. Um, maybe Hanuka at some point uh, would be nice if she could join. There was also uh, Pim, but I don't see him here yet. So maybe he will pop uh, in at a later point because uh, I know he uh, created um, a really beautiful piece. Uh, that's a tribute to the Dutch masters using AI. And his piece was also presented in Eindhoven and we're all very excited for him. So excited, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Okay, so with that, uh, we'll just jump in and get started. Milton, did you wanna go ahead and jump in first? Yeah, sure. Um, the simple question we like to start out with is, tell us more about your community. Well, there are many of us living in the Netherlands, some of us Dutch, some of us not. I'm a Belgian, for instance. Belgium is right next to the Netherlands. And I've been living uh, in the Netherlands now for about seven years. And uh, yeah, I'm really grateful for uh, how cool and friendly all the people of the Dutch community are. They're all lovely folks. I uh, went to an NFT event a couple of years ago up in uh, Amsterdam, and I met some other uh, Dutch artists. and. Uh, Marion had the, the idea to bring the community together through um, the uh, Dutch art uh, community group, which I think is a, a wonderful idea. And um, yeah, the aim, of course, of us meeting up is also um, being together, you know, in real life, touching base every now and then, uh, and being able to um, do group exhibitions and things like that. So really, bringing the web three in real life with real people. So amazing. And so um, as you're developing this, we want to start from the very beginning and how do you got started um, in this space? How did the um, 
founders and maybe you can share who the founders are and how they put this together and how did they reach out to build this Dutch community that you now have? Well, it was Marion again that reached out to me. I mean, she got together with a bunch of people already and she, um, she created uh, this uh, group here on Twitter, you know, like a message group where we uh, basically support each other on a daily basis. I mean, it's not just like good morning or things like that, but it's also uh, things going on in the space, really keeping each other posted, you know, on things that go on. You have a lot of support groups going on like that behind the scene. And I think the reason why Marion created this community so we could um, all support each other better, because I mean, this is so vast and there's so much going on that I think if you were playing on your own, it's a lot more difficult to get things going for yourself as an artist, whether, whereas when we're all together and we can share information even on a daily basis and support each other, I think in a way we grow together, but also, yeah, we help each other gain visibility, understand what is going on because everything moves so fast. I mean, it's almost impossible to be up to date all the time. And uh, I think it's uh, where her initiative stemmed from. She reached out to me one day and um, that was already, uh, I think about two years ago. And um, yeah, back then I was uh, a little busy. So I wasn't so much a part of the community as I am now, but um, I realized that it's really what keeps the web three going. It's just people yeah, banding together and doing their best to grow together. So. There's a real importance behind that. And um, I think um, many artists would gain from, um, yeah, joining communities or even uh, DAOs and things like that. I think it's the future of Web3, people sticking together and growing as a group. Love to hear that. Yeah, I heard about yeah, yeah, no, that's that's a great response. I, I would agree wholeheartedly. I think the people that are here now are mainly in it for community. And I was I was curious what your community looks like and sounds like right now if you know we're in a tough position for the market. I'm a, I'm a collector and so I look at it from that standpoint. I'm looking at market dynamics, but I'm hosting a lot of conversations right now where people are creating to create. I think a lot of the tourists are gone and I was just curious how your communities bonded over that to make sure that even if sales aren't necessarily here now. Um, you mentioned some things supporting people as far as visibility, um, IRL events. Um, I'm just curious what the what the community looks like right now. Is it is it growing? Um, are people uh, sticking around even through this quote unquote bear market that we're experiencing? And what are people doing to keep their heads up in the community? <laughs> Well, that's a really interesting uh, and to the point question uh, you have there. And I think it makes a lot of sense uh, given everything that's currently going on. Um, I think you have ups and downs like everywhere. And what we're seeing right now is that, um, of course, a lot of people have gone. And I think the Dutch community probably isn't spared. But what you see is that the the, the hardcore artists in their souls are still here, you know, and and the, the real one who really want to grow and make something out of this are still around and are still, you know, taking part in uh, the group chat we have daily and are really supporting each other. And I think there's a whole bunch of us uh, that are here every single day and really helping each other out. And it's not just answering the questions, but it's also about, yeah, sometimes, I mean, of course, as, as artists, we also collect and we, it's fun collecting from each other, I think, because um, as an artist, yeah, I like being collected. But when I can support also a fellow artist and in, in a way, it feels like collecting a little part of their soul, if you see what I mean. And I think it's beautiful and it's also really encouraging to people, um, even if it may not be much sometimes. But um, it, it's it's in many ways as a community. It's also, you know, some people have their strengths and, we and weaknesses, sorry. For instance, I'm a graphic designer, and I know that recently uh, Pim started working uh, on uh, his uh, magazine. And, uh, you know, I shared the knowledge I had together with him so that together, you know, we could take his thing to the next level and really, really make it grow. So it's really, really tiny things and each one according to, to what they know and to 
how we can uplift each other. For instance, other people are photographers. So I think when it comes to photography, I would trust their expertise more than my own. So yeah, I think it's all that, you know, combining everything we have to offer to, to help each other and to grow together. Great. I have a quick follow up on that, Abrahani, if I may. Uh, I was curious because <laughs> I was thinking about the dynamics right now of what's going on. And as you said, some people leave, some people go. We're going to have highs and lows. Uh, I think there's a lot of good people that have stuck around. Many are here in this room with us now. But I was curious, you said you have a group chat daily. And I've even noticed between the different socials on Discord and Telegram, for example, some some of the chats that were once very, very busy are are very quiet now, very sleepy. And so I was curious how you stimulate conversation. And I was curious which platform you're using to maintain that conversation. Well, you need to realize I, um, I work as an artist. I'm a freelancer. I mean, I also create uh, for in real life uh, people. So I'm not just creating uh, everything and being on social media all day. It, I have other activities. So um, I have to be very selective for my part. I know a lot of people are on Farcaster, you know, and here and there and wherever they can be. I already spend a lot of time on a daily basis on my end on uh, social media. For instance, it's at least two hours every day, which I think is a terrible lot, especially when you want room to create and you have um, commissions and other things you need to work on. But sadly, I think it's a necessity. So, um, yeah, now and then I still drop by on um, on Discord, but I'm not there every day because, I mean, just the noise of the notifications drives me crazy. <laughs> um I think the easiest and the most affordable one when it comes to yeah being online and the one where you still have the most people is Twitter. So it's still re or X. It, it still remains the one where I'm the most active, and I think uh, many people in our communities are active because of that reason. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. I, it, there's just too many things, you know, I try at the same time also being on uh, Instagram because I think as an artist, it's important being there. You also have uh, neighborhoods uh, uh, on on cyber, things like that, but it's more for exhibitions. Um, I'm also in many other places uh, as I'm initially I'm a graphic designer. So I'm on Dribbble, you know, on uh, Behance. I'm on many, many, many places. So I think it also depends on your specialty uh, and what you do. But for what I can see, the core of the community is on Farcaster and here on Twitter. Uh, well, that's very, uh, very true. You speak a lot on um, the dynamics on the multitasking that an artist has to have um, in, in the perspective of the power that community has on the work that artists are doing, which I want to speak a little bit of because I want to know a little bit more how you're building the community and what you are working on uh, for the community that impacts the artist in your community, how you're influencing them in the space, etc. But um, as we speak, it reminds me, I'm an artist, but I'm involved in many multitasking multi kind of things, right? And so um, we have to rely on or lean on community as much as possible and so um i love hearing the perspective uh of what your community does so i would love to spend a little bit of time um where you can share maybe a little bit more on how you're building the community in this space especially mm -hmm. at this time um i know milton mentioned this a little earlier at this time where a lot of people are leaving but the noise has gone but artists are still thriving um, still working on the art because they love it. And we're still in the Web3, and hopefully with the potential of influencing new artists that come into this space. So how do you provide support to your artists? I think, you know, I, we, we do inspire each other, I think, quite a lot. And what I want to say is not everybody is on the same level. And what I love about community is the idea is we're not here to compare to one another because I think not two people have the same path or have grown through the same kind of ways. And what I feel like saying, or at least this is very true to me, my idea of community is if somebody goes up, they take everybody along with them. They just don't go up on their own. And 
on a personal level, I mean, this is what I try to do to, to bring my fellows together with me. And I think when we're uh, in a group and when there's more dynamics, you know, more things happening and people are participating on a daily level, the fact that some of us are still here, we also motivate one another and we, we make things happen. For instance, I know that uh, I, I think it was towards the end of last year, um, the community put together a Dutch homage to the Dutch masters. And uh, there were some beautiful pieces that actually came out of that. Uh, some really, really amazing stuff that I think we will be uh, talking a little about later on during the space. Um, I was uh, a little busy at that time and I was also not in a really good phase personally. So I uh, also did my share, but a little later on uh, in time, I actually just minted my piece. But yeah, it's all about the community. And I think the more of us participate and show up on a daily basis, the more we motivate one another. And I think the learning is also from one another to see, okay, you know, what platform are you on? How are conditions there for the artist? Is is it relevant? You know, are things happening there? I, I think this is also a solidarity that is going on so people can learn from one another and not waste time because i think we're at a point where there are so many platforms but at the same time many bad actors are leaving or are closing their doors so the experience of everybody being put together motivates but at the same time uh, it's accelerated growth if you see what i mean and i think this is how you create community when people can really get things out of one another i mean not in an abusive way but more in a growth way in a stimulating way Thanks for that response, Angie. And I, I wanted to touch on what you had mentioned about platforms coming and going. I think that's a hot topic right oh, yes. now. I was curious. <laughs> I was curious what you're hearing. Um, I was having some discussions with artists recently, for example. I I find the the market dynamics really interesting because I think in 2021 we overshot the landing. Uh, we got a little drunk, <laughs> probably were the victims of our own success to a degree. Um, the space got a lot of highlight and uh, a lot of hype at the end of the day, and I think it went too far. Now, we've seen, um, you know, prices followed accordingly. Now, you've seen the pendulum swing the other mm -hmm. way. We've seen a lot of people experimenting with free mints, with um, very low price mints, um, you know, Zora, Lens Protocol, um, this new super cheap remote control. Um, these type of things come to mind. And I think, uh, like you said, it's really important to have that discussion around there's no one right formula for any artist. But I was just curious from your end, what you're hearing, are people experimenting with these platforms? Do they like them? What's their take on it? Um, you know, what what are people doing right now to kind of explore some of these new, newer platforms and new mechanics that have popped up? Well, I think it's kind of a group thing to want to try uh, all the different things that come out. And I think, it, you know, the NFT space, from my point of view, is not any different than any other place in real life. And what you see in real places in real life is that hypes come and go. And a lot of people tend to follow the hypes because of course, as artists, we don't want to be left out in the cold and we want to grow and follow the trends and be with everybody else. And I think some of these trends sometimes are nice, but I'm not sure that everything works for everyone. And I think in the long run, people following these hypes without giving them much thought uh, can be very destructive for the art ecosystem. I mean, I've been reading a lot of information uh, and I, you know, I still receive a lot of email even sometimes when I'm busy. And I was reading, I think it was on Artemore's profile this morning, he was mentioning how this year has been terrible on a worldwide basis for the, the art market and how it's not working out for everyone. And um, it's just a reflection, I think, of that. And I think when we overproduce and when we sell things for too cheap, like when we sell ourselves short, there comes a point where we wanted damage control. But I think in reality, we're doing much more damage because we're bringing down the price of our work. I mean, if I spend over 20 hours to create a piece of art, which is sometimes the case, and then I have to sell it away for free, you know, just to gain visibility, then guess what this is doing actually to my work? It's devaluating it. And I think the same happens, you know, to, to everyone. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Petra and what she did because she got really, really lucky with foundation. And even though those were free mints, I think she still made, you know, a little money. They had the same principle as Zora, where uh, she also got a little 
something out of it and then it kind of accumulated and there was secondary and everything but this isn't going to be working out that way for everyone so yeah i mean again what works for someone may not work for somebody else and we may share our experiences but in a way they're very different and for the remote controls i think it's uh, a good and a bad idea at the same time i love the system that three mints are uh, casting a vote i mean that's fantastic but the part i find the the, the suckiest in this system is the fact that you have to switch to the Zora network. And if you then want to send your art back to the mainnet, it's costing you a lot of money, you know, just to do that. So is it really wise? Um, I'm not so sure. I think it's nice. The, the intent is nice. But there's a small saying that I know which says, hell is paved with good intentions. So, you know, I'm okay with the ID, but uh, the, the way it's being done, I'm not entirely sure about it. And I'm not sure it's that beneficial to the artists because the people who have the funds, of course it works for them, but then I've seen smaller artists really struggling, you know, to get votes with these systems. So maybe it works for those who created the system, but maybe not so much for the smaller artists, or at least that's my feeling without, of course, casting judgment or anything. It's just an impression. I hear you. Yeah, that's that mirrors the conversation that we had quite a bit, actually. So I think that if artists are making a distinction between free work and something like a one on one or something that took 20 hours, we had artists, for example, that were experimenting with AI. And, and, and in some cases, you can really get out AI work in a quick manner. So you can crank out pieces uh, without too much effort. And so they thought that making that distinction, which looked clearly different from their their one-on-ones or their work on foundation or their work on super rare, um, that was okay to experiment in that way. But yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it's something that the artists have to be very careful of. The, the conversation we had was called exhibition or exploitation <laughs> and i think i think there's a thin line um, i like what you said that the road to hell is paid with good intentions because uh, i think you do have to be very careful about following the trends just because everybody's doing very it. much and, so uh, yeah in some cases the platforms may be benefiting more than the artist at the end of the day so i think there's a time and place for it um, if it's thought out carefully and if there's a really big distinction between some of the work that you're putting there and your other work. Um, but it's interesting to see that pendulum swing. So I appreciate you chiming in on that. Um, I wanted to shift the conversation um, a little bit just to the uh, current things that you're working on now. Can you spotlight some of the initiatives that your community is driving at the moment? Anything new that we can look forward to soon coming out of the Dutch art community? Oh, yeah, very much so. I would like, uh, above all, to mention my uh, friend, Pim, who uh, sadly isn't joining us today because uh, he isn't feeling so well initially he was supposed to come um but um for instance he's put together a magazine i'm gonna try and share the link with you here uh, which is called digitize and i think it's um yeah fantastic um he's trying to really do good for the community you know talk about mental health things like that but also do artist spotlights and um yeah bring it things of value to people so we can all grow together and, and learn and discover artists and other things. Well, let me share that here with you. I've just shared it uh, in the conversation below. I'm not sure if it did get pinned at the top or not. Yeah, I see yeah, that it at did. the top. So yeah, I mean, kudos to him because as a graphic designer, I'm quite aware of how time consuming uh, doing something like that uh, is. I mean, it really is a lot of work to put something like that together, to interview the people, to get the information, to seep through it. So, um, and um, from uh, what uh, we see, uh, the response is uh, being quite good because um, his audience is growing. This is already the third uh, issue he's um, letting out, like releasing. And um, I think the previous ones uh, have uh, over a thousand, five, a thousand, what, sorry, 1,500 view viewers each, something like that. So, which I think is uh, quite the feat, you know, especially right now with how quiet the community and everything is. So, um, 
I'm really super stoked for him. I think it's a really beautiful initiative to give a chance to many artists to highlight different things, whether it's photography, you know, or AI or whatever people are doing. And uh, yeah, I think it's every little bit help right now. And it's a, a really nice initiative. Love to see that. And love to see how you're helping promote the work that he's doing, which in turn helps your community and bring people to it, um, what you guys are building uh, with the Dutch art community. Um, did you want to uh, speak a little bit more of the artists that you have there and how far you've grown as a community? Ah, uh, yes, we were uh, preparing this a little bit amongst ourselves. And now uh, one thing that uh, we did want to do is uh, showcase some of the art of the community. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Hanukkah and um, Marion uh, recently, or at least towards the end of last year, they decided to put together a homage to uh, the Dutch artists. And um, the idea, well, Dutch painting is quite famous throughout the world, especially for the Middle Ages and the Renaissance masters. And the idea was uh, to get inspired with um, more traditional art and to uh, put a modern take on it. And um, I um, selected and took a look together with my community at a couple of pieces that we thought would be quite representative of uh, who we are and what we do. And I think it would be uh, amazing uh, to maybe talk about these. And I think we have Hanukkah here and I see she has uh, the speaker role. So I think it would be lovely if she could, if she could come up and present uh, her piece, of course. Hello, everyone. Hi. What a wonderful opportunity. <laughs> I've been listening uh, close, <laughs> and I'm not quite the uh, as good as a speaker as uh, Angie is, but I try, I try my best. Well, uh, we did the Dutch Homes World. We started it in uh, last year, end of the year. It was an idea I had uh, during. Um, Yes, in April we had an open space gallery and then I thought maybe we could do something together and then the Dutch home at world uh, arise. So that's uh, quite great. And I have two works in it, but we love to talk about the the one one edition that's View on Dordrecht 2023. And it's a uh, homage to the painter Albert Kuip. He uh, he did a lot of landscapes, and I found uh, his work on the internet because I was searching what would I paint of uh, what would I shoot that um, could be from a painter. And then I found his work, and I loved it so much. I didn't know it quite well before I did, but. Um, uh so I found uh Dordrecht my my daughter is living in Dordrecht and I'm about a half half hour away of it and on the day I wanted to shoot um and there was a lot of clouds in the air and I thought oh this is a perfect day to go there and I uh, my husband drove me to the place uh where I shoot from, that's Papendrecht, it's on the other side of Dordrecht. <laughs> and the the more we got to Papendrecht, the more the clouds disappeared. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, I can't make the photos anymore. But the sky was actually very beautiful. So I still got my camera ready and uh, I did shoot a lot of photos. And the final photo I, uh, I had of four uh, photos is a composite uh, of that four photos and and we talked about it before and and she said the light was maybe different but it wasn't it was just from the other side of the backside and that's why one only one boat is very lighted and the others are not so that's a bit about uh, my work i don't know if you like to know more about it <laughs> you, you can ask questions love to see it i, I pinned here um one of your images but it's not the image that you were talking about so if you would like you can pin it to the top um for those listening um can see it uh, i do want to welcome um our guests that are 
uh, attendees that are here and want to come up and ask questions um, about the Dutch community or about the artists in the Dutch community. You guys are all welcome to join us in the speaker stage um, to speak with Angie and Renati um, about their community i think it's a great time to do that as we as we continue um to speak to to artists in your community um Henneke, your your art is amazing but you also have been playing around with ai tools um but as a photographer how how do you see your participation in this space impact your work your current work that you're doing right now my current work as an AI artist, you mean? And the work that you create here for this space, how do you, how do you find that impacting uh, what you're doing and your community? Well, um, uh, I was a photographer for a long time and then I saw all those uh, AI um, works and I thought I'd give it a try too, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do like it so very much and the work I made now, uh, they, they come from my imagination and you can not photograph that. It's so totally different. I, I do not do not like to create things in uh, AI that are that I can make as a photographer also. So I do. Uh, there's a big. Uh, difference in my photography and my AI, but they are all, I try the, at least <laughs> to make them all detailed and um, yeah, and colorful. That's the word. I think that's the word about the art. So Does that answer beautiful. your question? Uh -huh. <laughs> it answered the question for me and I have a follow-up question, Hanukkah. I've had some discussion with photographers about this word post photography and i found it interesting that you as a photographer chose to instead capture images of your mind that can't be captured with a camera so you're doing something very different than your normal craft through the ai tools but i was curious what your take is on this word post photography for example because there are other artists and photographers who have chosen to produce more uh there's a mix it's a realism surrealism like rupe renisto comes to mind for example um yeah. what's your take on that is post photography the right word for it there's some contention over that and my, another follow-up question too is uh there's a lot of discussion around ai being a lot like the invention of the camera people are when cameras were first invented, uh, a lot of portraitures, painters were basically put out of business. No. Um, but they were there was a lot of uh, detraction against camera because people said, oh, you're just pushing a button. It's too easy. That's not art. And we're having a lot of similar discussions today about AI. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just pushing a button using software. That's not <laughs> art. Um, so <laughs> yeah. I wanted to know your take on those two uh, somewhat contentious topics. Well, for the AI, I do use... Uh, to edit it, I do use my Photoshop also, so I do use uh, the same techniques and and in, for my photography, I can use those techniques too, but I do like my photographs as they are. I don't do not really change them, but you it, the AI makes it a lot easier because you can select a, a thing and you can change it if you like to, but I don't do that with my photography, but you can do it with uh, AI also. And I love that you can do so many things that you couldn't or had to do a lot more work for it when those possibilities weren't there. And I do hear the conversations from photographers that do not like AI artists because they're stealing their work, but it's not just pushing a button and you have a work it's or give a prompt and it comes out like uh, finished yeah there are artists that do that and but i don't do that you it's hard working i'm i'm working hours on that to create what i do and it's much more work than my photographs so I, that's for sure <laughs> so uh the and being out of business because of AI, 
I don't think so. Uh, people do still paint, people do still create, and, and people do can always photograph. It can be next to each other. I, I don't think uh, photography will uh, disappear as an art. It will only grow, and you have more pos possibilities to do with it. So that's my take on it. I think it's very true. And as uh, I think it was Michelle, uh, Michelle Villun, she, she put uh, something out a couple of weeks ago, which I thought was really interesting and very true. She said, it's not photography, it's a render. And I think that makes sense because photography is something you make with a camera, whereas something that's AI generated, uh, I just said it, you know, it's been generated. It's not been created like if you were doing a painting. I mean, we have a, a term for each and every work of art you know we have cartoons we have uh, comic strips we have sculpture we have photography we have painting i do vector art we have drawing so i think in this case you know it would make sense to call it ai render yeah i Which agree oh please continue i i am sorry for interrupting No, I just wanted to add that on top of what Annika said, because I think it made a lot of sense. I don't know if she wants to add anything to uh, continue her discussion. No, I, I think I, I said what I wanted to say. I, I think I answered the question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did in a beautiful way. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. at, right before my last question here, um, community member to community member community builder to community builder i do want to invite those that want to speak or want to um, give a comment or leave a remark an encouragement um to request uh but i are here um i'm gonna let you speak um but as we are waiting for people to come up um, to speak i wanted to ask what is something that light are the community be, um together with Nijamo Art, what can we do to support your community of artists? So, sorry, I didn't quite get your question because sometimes the audio on your end isn't very, very good. I'm, I actually put the uh, headphones on so I could hear better, but uh, I think the communication isn't all that good. Sorry. I am so sorry. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yes, thank you. Very good. I wanted to ask, what is something that LIDART, a member of the Nijamo Art community, what can we be doing to support your community of artists? I think what is important is people being able to network together already. I think it's already a terrific beginning. What I find a little sad is um, I see artists judging other artists and um, Segregate. I think it's very human to discriminate, but I think there's room for everyone. And it's not because a collector invests in shit coins or whatever, or buys somebody else's art that there's not going to be room for you. Yeah, I see you laughing there. But you know, I mean, there are people actually pulling faces when they see collectors buying coins or whatever, and or, or, or other people's work. And I find it sad because you know when you resonate with somebody's art you resonate with it and i think it doesn't matter whether you have 20k followers in your audience or whether you have a thousand what you have to see i think is the quality of the person and of the art and you know we all begin someplace and we all begin somewhere and what i think is sad is is, is people doing that i say so because i sometimes see it you know really really big accounts neglecting others and yeah treating them like they don't exist but i'm not sure this is how it gets done and i think you get better results when everybody you know goes along together and as members of a community we pull each other up and i think that's already a big step you know people supporting one another we're all artists and not one artist superior to any other i mean you might love what you're doing and you might be good at it but it doesn't make you any better than anybody else so i think just you know, being sober about this and um, keeping your head straight on your shoulders, I think it's a, a first great step because everyone matters. You know, if it weren't for all the small artists, 
uh, maybe NFTs would be dead, actually, because in a way, we've kept the community going, even though it was super quiet. And I think people collecting from one another is uh, also a big part of the ecosystem in itself. So um, I think that's uh, number one. Um, for the rest, I think, yeah, what I find a little sad about the NFT community is... Um, sometimes the lack of visibility in real life and i think if we really want to do something about that i think what we need at this point uh is uh, promoting uh digital art and um, i'm seeing some DAOs doing a lot of things concerning that like with the money they get they buy screens and they have like screens here and there which means they can really easily um you know make uh exhibitions kind of on the fly and I think we're at a point where screens are almost everywhere. And I think there's almost no excuse anymore for not promoting digital art. And digital art is just as valid as any form of art. And I think this is the next level, you know? And when we get there and the world is able to do that, then we reach all of us the next level and art comes together. Digital art as something brand new, you know, as another form of art, as art 2.0, so to speak. I love that you brought that up, Angie. That was going to be my next question because you had talked earlier about visibility. And I think that's one of our biggest challenges in Web3 is getting this seen. I can remember back in 2021, I had quite a large collection, but I'd actually never seen digital art on a big screen. It was always on my phone or computer, and it really made it real when I saw it. I said, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. This is this is mind blowing to see it blown up like it should be yeah. in high fidelity. Are there any particular initiatives right now that you've seen that you like as far as disseminating digital art to the to the larger world? Um, for example, you talked about Art the More. He has the program Art Crush. I know. Uh, I think which has done a good job. I was going to um, mention you know, him actually because I think it's super all inspiring. He's using public space. An advertising space to show art. And I think it's it's also part of what I was talking about, you know, that next level initiative on bringing art to a much larger scale. I mean, right now, mostly it's all about DGENs, you know, all the crypto people mostly buying NFTs <laughs> from one another. But I think if, if we can reach out to a wider audience and show that it's not a scam, because I think, uh, sadly, a lot of the world, um, with some of the things that have happened here and there, uh, a lot of people don't see us as legit. And yeah, I think we need to turn that around. And I think it's nice some platforms allow people to buy in US dollars and things like that. Um, it's a way to show that it's legit, you know, and even some of the recent market uh, things the, with uh, the Bitcoin and uh, Ethereum, I think making it legit and slowly showing to people that it's an investment like any other is going to, is going to lead the way so yeah but uh, kudos truly to uh that initiative of uh, art crush because i think being able to display art like that all over the world on screen and giving artists this free and amazing opportunities yeah just life-changing i would say it's true great answer i wanted to follow up on that too what's your favorite type of display at the moment because i think there's some companies vying for display, uh, whim, token frame, um, even infinite objects. Um, do you have a, a particular favorite right now? And um, and I know that there's a new company in town called White Walls, which okay. is trying a, a whole different avenue where they're saying, hey, um, right now the screen technology is quite expensive. I would tend to agree with that. Um, it's a bit clunky. I would agree with that as well. <laughs> and uh, instead, most people have a TV hanging on their wall. And with uh, an Apple TV for the moment and soon to be hopefully every TV, White Walls is just trying to bring the ability to cast your digital art to the screen that you already own. Is that something that you see could have legs or, or how do we get uh, these digital displays well, in, everywhere? Um I don't want, I'm going to answer your question indirectly because uh, I'm thinking about a comment I recently saw on Twitter, which made me think because I had the experience in real life as well. Um, I recently was at NFT uh, Brussels, NFT Fest, and one of my artworks was shown there uh, on a digital screen. And yeah, apparently that screen uh, was uh, supposed to be displaying art like it was made for displaying art. Um, 
But I think what shocked me the most is um, given my trade, I work with color profiles a lot, which means when I create, you know, colors are really specific. I pick a specific color that's actually defined with web or as, yeah standards for printing. And I think what shocked me the most is um, it wasn't a bad screen. Don't get me wrong. It's more, it was uncalibrated. And as a graphic designer and somebody who works with color profiles, you know, the colors were so off. And I think instead of working or, or pro promoting one kind of screen or the other, the only thing I'm going to say is all of that is irrelevant if the screen is uncalibrated and if you're actually flowing the art you're displaying because the artist has an intent. And like I said, every color I pick is picked specifically. So I use a very, very particular color palette. And when you deform, because this is what goes on, when you deform the artist's work, then you make it somewhat irrelevant. And I mean, like... I wasn't irritated to see my work out of shape because of that, uh, but um, in a way it did make me a little sad. So I think I have yet to see a system that's actually um, um, hi-fi when it comes to the colors or to whatever it is the, the artist created. And so right now I'm going to refrain from making any answer that goes towards the question that you asked very specifically for that very reason. I think it's something we still need to educate collectors and the general public on, like our color profiles and respecting that. Interesting. Is that something that you think could be fixed or tweaked if you had seen that, let's say, a day prior to the exhibition? Was that something that could be done to fix it or is that just a limitation of the screen itself, you think? Uh, I think in some cases this can be fixed up to a certain extent because I know on some screens you can truly calibrate, but I mean, it takes work. And it means that the technician handling the screens need to know what they are doing. Like when I reinstall my computer, one of the first things I do to make sure that, you know, I'm accurate is actually calibrate my screen. You even have hardware these days, and it's been in existence for quite a long time to be able to calibrate screen. Um, it's mostly destined for computers, but I would be curious to see what exists when it comes to these kind of display screens. Um, I think some effort might be needed, but I think this could be something doable. But it's more about education right now. I 100% agree. I, I know some people that have set up galleries and the takeaway from talking to them and actually helping them from time to time set up is that it's not just plug and play, <laughs> unfortunately. So that's the challenge. Um, it's going to be experience with these different screens, different texts, different backends and, and colors. I had not even considered the the color palette and the distortion that you might get from screen to screen but that's a really interesting take that i haven't heard before so i think experience at the end of the day is going to be uh the solution but it's it's going to take time and i think there's probably an important line of communication that needs to take place for exhibitors to somehow ensure that what you had intended to be seen on the screen is what's actually being shown um, I hope that there's more conversations around that beforehand in the planning phases to where you get an accurate display of your artwork, not some distortion with different colors, because obviously that can throw <laughs> a huge monkey wrench oh, yes. in everything. So, Most definitely. Yeah, thanks for that. No, you're very welcome. And I think this was uh, that was a very interesting question you threw out there. Uh... But I think, yeah, again, you know, it's like when a car first came out, you know, people initially said cars were bad, but then, you know, rules, regulations came out and then people learned to drive. And I think it's, it's probably the same with uh, crypto and digital art, because I think many people who are not familiar with color profiles also might have that pitfall. But I think uh, with a little time and education, you know, uh, I think we will get there and uh, I think if museums at one point, and I think it's really the future. Yeah, I know I say I think a lot, but uh, I can't always say I have all the answers or that I am omniscient. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think if museums also get to have more digital art, there will be more growth in that regard. And this probably is going to lead to new standards and new ways for art to be displayed. And if that comes around, of course, 
then we'll have more experience and more things to learn from and to grow from. And I think this will also help artists and everybody else at the end of the day. Absolutely agree. I think that as we continue to develop um, and galleries adapt to the new world of technology, we will see definitely a change in the difference within the technology aspect. Um, they're not negating it, but as technology keeps improving, they're still adapting. And we're so, so young and early into the tech stage, although we, we've been in this for a couple of years. Um, however, tech is just trying to catch up into what they can provide us as artists, which I think is very cool how um, the, the, um, the displays are coming out with the capability of connecting to your online galleries or when you travel and you see your display, um, at different galleries that are just putting up a TV. Um, even just having that access right now, it's huge for artists. And so I do agree to your initial point that it's huge that communities provide these opportunities for artists as we are developing and growing. Um, still so young in the tech world, we are still developing and growing and still learning. So I do agree, education is key. Education will be key as we continue to develop. <laughs> so. Um, this is a very interesting point. Thank you so much, Milton, and thank you so much, Angie, for, for those responses. Um, I know we're coming down to our time of close. For those that want to come up, we still have a few minutes if you wanted to uh, join us on the stage and give a comment uh, to, to Angie or Hannah Key Tours in the Dutch art community um, and what they are doing. If you want to stay connected with the Dutch art community <clears throat> to the very beginning of our um, top post, there is the Dutch art community Twitter handle uh, that you are welcome to to join. Let me. I'm trying to repost it as I speak. So um, uh, you're able to join their community, listen in, or hear, follow up with what they are doing. I'm sure that as they continue to develop and grow in digital art and photography and mixed media and AI art, they would continue to push um, their artists and their artists. Um, displays in different areas, I'm sure, of it, um, as we continue to develop. And there's so many new NFT events happening that um, I see why not, right? I don't see why why not have some of these um, art Dutch artists uh, display in some of these venues um, soon to come. And so um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure um, Milton and I will keep an eye to see what you guys are continuing to build. Uh, we do want to stay post it um, as we grow together in this Web3 world and community that we're building here. So with that said, any last words? Uh, yes, um, I wanted to uh, share uh, some work uh, of uh, other fellows uh, within uh, the Dutch art community. Uh, Pim was supposed to join us today, but um, he's actually not being able to be present today. Um, I pinned one of his works here at the top of uh, the um, the space. It's about uh, the Garden of uh, Earthly Delights, which uh, is inspired by Jerome Bosch. And uh, here, um, it's a triptych that he created with AI, but not just AI. Of course, there's some Photoshop going in there. Um, and this piece was uh, presented in Eindhoven here in, here in the Netherlands. Uh, it was... Uh, selected to be displayed and uh, it's really a shame that um, he's not here to talk about it himself but uh, another beautiful piece of work and also I wanted to mention uh, Gabby um, I think it was one of the pieces that I shared um, with uh, Abrahan, Abrahani um, Gabby wasn't able to join us either and um, her piece was inspired by uh, Vincent van Gogh let me see if I'm able to find it maybe to pin because of course I don't always come just to talk about myself, but uh, it's also about my community above everything else. Uh, ah, here, here's her profile. Uh, let me see if I can find her piece. It's really funny because um, in that uh, community piece, you can also see her trademark, so to speak. She often has a a lot of butterflies in the art she creates. And we had a, a discussion about, um, oh, I'm being told that her work is pinned already. Let me see.
it's in the tweet about the space. Ah, yes, yes, correct, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted to highlight her because initially we had prepared uh, three pieces so we could show a little bit of everybody and, you know, show a little array of um, what the Dutch community is doing. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for giving uh, all of us this opportunity and for all the interesting questions that you had. I think this was um, truly an amazing discussion. And, uh, yeah, I think art is an interesting topic in itself and uh, the future of it, especially when it comes to screens, displays and so on. We actually had this discussion uh, last week with the Dutch art community in our um, weekly space as well, because uh, our idea was also to talk about um, being an artist, but also outside of the NFT space. And I think it's uh, one of the pitfalls many NFT artists have right now in this community. Many people uh, focus solely on NFTs. And I think if you do that, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I think it's important not to keep all of your eggs in the same basket and also to have a much larger vision altogether. And um, initially, I just wanted to focus on NFTs. Uh, and I realized it was a bubble, you know, and a bubble, not everybody might make it or the bubble kind of might burst at any time. So um, I worked really hard on making myself more versatile. And what I want to say about that, where I want to go is we're seeing more and more companies um, actually offering screens uh, or screens yeah, these kind of devices as a streaming service where you can put art. Uh, recently, like a couple of months ago, I was approached by a Portuguese company called Window Site, and their idea is just to find artists willing to uh, work together with them, and they would get paid on a purview basis. So they would be selling their services to uh, yeah hospitals, these kinds of places. And their idea is that, you know, when you go to the doctor or to the dentist, it's already so very stressful to just wait there for your turn. And life can be so much nicer and things can be so much more relaxed if you can watch beautiful art while you wait, you know, while uh, you sit there for and wait for your turn. So it's what I want to say to artists. It's uh, kind of my closing line is uh, just don't think solely in terms of NFTs, but also Think more about art on a much wider scale. And please also think about growing in real life. I think if you want to, to be steady and to really make a name for yourself, even in, in the NFT space, just because you're known here, it doesn't make you anybody else outside of this space. So it's really important to keep on working and uh, to grow also outside of this community so your art gets to be seen by more people and you bring more value to your collectors and to everybody else within your community. That's such a beautiful encouragement. Thank you so much for that, Andy. Um, I I agree. I think that as we move in the space, um, there's so much more to connect um, and to not just stay within our bubble. And so um, I love what you guys are doing. Um, keep up the good work. I'm always supportive of what you guys are doing. For those that don't know, they did have an airdrop or an NFT. If you wanted to pick that up, uh, please head to their Dutch art um, page so that you can check out more information on what they're building and what they're creating. Um, Haneke, do you have any last words? Do I have any last words? Well, I think I can add that we're trying to do another uh, exhibition uh, with the Dutch art community and uh, we really hope for it to work out. So, and uh, the Dutch art community, the Dutch home at world. We we hope more artists will join in time too. So uh, yes, that's where we're working on, and <laughs> every uh, little bit of help is. Uh, we we have the duck pass. I maybe I can. <laughs> I cannot share it right now, but, but uh, if people like to collect it, it's we use this. Um, the money we get from that to help us uh, uh, do the exhibition again. So we would like, we really would like uh, people to get that dog pass and help us a bit. But that's my last word. I thank you for this opportunity to speak and uh, it was a wonderful space. Learned a lot again. <laughs>
Thank you so much uh, for participating and being a part of what we are doing here as well. Um, we're here to support um, and we're here to see uh, how we can continue to encourage and empower artists in this space. And so with that, thank you so much for everyone who's joined us. Um, if you have any comments for them, please leave it at the chat box. And with that said, we will end our space. So grateful for the Dutch art community and what they're doing for their, for their artists. And so, um, so grateful. Marion, we love you. Thank you for building what you are doing there with Andy and um, having to and the rest of it as we said. Thank you, friends, for great. joining. Great pleasure. And thank you for hosting us and for taking the time to talk with us today. It's my pleasure. So grateful to highlight what you guys are doing. It's have a great, too. have a great Tuesday. You too. Take care. Bye bye, and hopefully see you soon. Hopefully, yes. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you, fam, for showing up. Appreciate you all.